um, it seems like societal norms that we grew up in at some point also has an effect, has a has an impact on how we formulate our thoughts. Yeah. And this leads to the next question, whether societal norms are actually hindering our progress of free thinking and developing as a nation in general. Um, so what can we do, if, if you know of any that you can mention, uh, societal norms that are hindering free thinking? Uh, tribalism, for example. I think tribalism is a dumb concept, right, in today's age. Absolutely. Uh, why are we still a tribalistic society? Because we are, if we deny that, then there's something wrong. Yeah, he just mentioned FGM. Right, mm. right. Um, I, I think, yeah, there are things that hinder... Um, uh, I, I, I really, you know, I used to like this term free thinking, but at some point I realized if we if we if we have an alternative word, word. to use, I'm open for it. Right? Yeah. Um so I will I will I will I will come up with something <laughs> the cultivation of the intellect, the right. cultivation of the, the refinement of the mind, you know. Um there are things of course in this society, like every society in the world, that hinder the progress of cultivating the human mind. Right. Yeah. In Gambia. I give you my favorite one. Going to school, going through the motions. You get me. And right. the devotion. I'm going with this. Yes, it, like uh, if you don't go to school, yeah. How do you view a person? Kumusuta dem school life am. What are some of the things that have been pushed into your mind? Why is it that we say we need an educated president? Why do we say that, uh, you know, a person who is educated is different from the person who is not educated? But what, what education, what, yeah. edu what is this education right. that we are having? Mm -hmm. This schooling system that we have was created by the colonial system to groom people who can help them run the country and they extract their profit. They needed translators because they cannot talk to the local population. Right. They needed clerks. Mm -hmm. They needed right. uh, secretaries. You know, drivers. They, drivers. You know, they needed people who can serve them. Right. So this educational system was not created to to create a humane, uh, conscious human being. Right. It was created for the advancement of the colonial mode of production. I believe so. Yeah. Too. So when they co we come back and then we continue, instead of dismantling this colonially uh, created uh, school system, we continued it, and um. You, somebody will tell you, ah, yeah, mom, so demo school, you know, you'll just end up you're like your father who is just a farmer. Right. As if, Farming if you don't have I farmers, think. you'll be sitting there s saying those things, yeah? Or, or sometimes you'll hear this, a farmer and a teacher, who is more important? You know, so we, oh, yeah, we, we grew yeah, up yeah. in a society that uh, a, a, a created these um, zombies, you know? And I, I don't mean to cut you, I'm so sorry. But this is precisely why, you see where I was going with what I said, that at some point in your life, what, because you, you pass through, you are taught by your, your, your home, right. you are taught by your school. At what point do you think for yourself? That's why I say in every person's life, you should have that period at least or time in your life where you are allowed to just think and create self Self-actualization, that's right. how you build your future. Right. Because then that's how you look, view your current situation because everybody's situation is different. Right. Now you being able to cult freely cultivate the thought and think, this is my situation, this is how it differs from this person, this is what's logical, this is what ideas would work for me, this is what wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs that. Right. But the problem we have in Gambia is we don't have a culture that allows you to do that because there's situations where... the, the Thought is expected to be done for you at every step of the way. And if you watch how most things go, how most people's life, it's pretty scripted. Right. And I mean, do we, do we even, I mean, then again, we grow up to be parents, right? That's how our parents grow up. They grow up in a system. It's like, do they even know they're writing these scripts? Is it something they just, okay, it's feeling kofeka. Then go continue. Then go continue. And I, I'm so sorry to cut you. But um. I, I, I have these conversations every time we go up, up country. I say, but is it serving you? What does it mean? What does like, it mean? An is, this is our culture. This is what we know. Oh, yeah. Like when we're talking about sensitive topics like FGM, you know, child marriages and stuff. This is our culture. This is what we know. I say, okay. Now, if you don't think freely, you would not 
allow yourself to sit back and think, why did people practice FGM? Now that takes us to the source, like the history. What was the reason? Is this a reason that, do we need to still be reasoning this way? Is it still rational, like you mentioned? Is it something that serves us? If it doesn't, logical, being able to freely form these ideas and ideologies, that's what free thinking is to me. Now you are able to be like, okay, leader had to turn you. This, it was... It was used to do something great in the past. Mm. It was a form of protection. Parents didn't cut their kids because they hated them back then. They thought they were protecting them. But if there's a different form and there's new knowledge to show you that it doesn't work anymore, just cut it out. Mm. So this is why free thinking is absolutely like, um, we have to like cu- cultivate these cultures mm. and just forget And the And fear. you know, you mentioned something that is important. It's, you know, this, the, um, um, one of the hindrances you were asking about hindrances mm-hmm. is the issue of authority mm-hmm. and hierarchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, you go from your house. You have your parents mm-hmm. who have their idea of how you should live your life. You go to school. So at every f- a time of your life, you have an authority figure: the parents at the house, the teachers at the school, the boss at the job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And then, of course, you have the, the, the thinkers of society. You have the TV. So, for example, in Marxism, they talk about the base and the superstructure. Mm-hmm. Yeah? The base is um, basically the, the point of production and the economic base. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And then you have the superstructure, which is uh, where the ideas of the ruling class are enacted. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Through the media, through religion, through law. So that's why you'll see somebody, uh, somebody that's been voting since 1965. It doesn't work, but he would die to, to cast that ballot, right. that, 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 that uh, ballot, right? Because that person has been convinced. These are the ideas, what the Marxism, they call the dominant ideas of the ruling class. You know, this indoctrination that happened from when you're young, <coughs> you need to go to school. It's, uh, it's the key to success, you know? And then you went to school, you finished, you are still here. You are like, ah, success, be mama, how What type of success? Why knew I would be late? Education Younger. is the key, though. Yeah. I don't really it's believe the that. Interpretation of education, that's the problem. I think knowledge. But the term education itself had so much baggage. Um, but I think we'll get into that. But maybe, it's, maybe, it's, maybe, it's maybe what limited. We do, maybe what we should do is, is to try and r- unravel the term education. Yep. What, what does it mean? And what is it seen to me now? Mm-hmm. Because I, I, I think it's a compound um, um, word. It, the, it, it the, do entail a lot of things. The term education, if I remember correctly, comes from the, the etymology. Is a Latin root is to train, to cultivate. Right. You know, to, to come to train. Like you know the the Arabic word uh, uh, like uh, uh, tarbia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has the same root as the word rab and murabbi. Right. It's like it, it's the train. So the purpose of education in the ancient world was to refine the human spirit and move it away from what uh, uh, a, a, the, 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 they will call the bestial nature of man, right. the bestial nature of the human being, to take it towards the angelic the nature angelic of the nature, yeah? Yeah. The, 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 the Satani and the Malachani, right. you know? Right. And the, and so this, way the, this was the idea. The idea was... Uh, that the human being have this desire, this ego mm. that uh, has a gravitational pull towards um, that, which is the basis of things, you know. Right. And now, how can this human being be cultivated to be trained to understand that uh, they can rise above these egoistic desires and to become uh, a, a fully uh, uh, actualized human being, you know, who can become a rational, ethical, moral, intelligent. A, a creature in society mm. and in tune with nature. Mm-hmm. Now what we have as passes of us education, it's basically a grooming ground for slaves who can support the capitalist mode of production. So formal education. Formal education. Right. Because even when you look at uh, the educational system, wh- when you have a textbook in an educational system, what do they, what, uh, what do they write there? Best book <laughs> for the exam. If you basically, if you read this book, you will pass your exam. Yeah, at every point you've been examined mm. whether you have mastered this part of your indoctrination. <laughs> um, now you can proceed, and then um, because it's not even to create you uh, to become a thinker, right. it is for you to memorize stuff 
and regurgitate it because that's how you can be a good slave. A slave so cannot conform. think. Yeah. A slave is not supposed to think yeah. because the moment the slave start thinking, mm-hmm. it breaks the bonds and the bonds of uh, of enslavement. You see, even when you look at human history, you look at the Haitian Revolution in Haiti when um, the, the the enslaved Africans they rose up on the 22nd of August 1789 and uh, they burned down the plantation, all the plantations in San Domingo. You know why? Because they know that this filator of Bijogi. Yep. And this is what links us to the slave system. The moment they figured out this is not witchcraft, these people don't have food. Power, witchcraft power over it. Because you know why? I mean, white people showed up, niggas was like, who are these people? We, they came with cannons and shit, niggas is like, ha, ni mom, ni jinelan. You know, you yeah. even have that concept in Gambia, right. tubab you know? Yeah. Because people they didn't have, they, they didn't understand who are these violent people who are just, you know, so. They're not used they, to, that's not yeah, normal. They, yeah, it's not normal. normal. Yeah. You know how black people used to fight? Actually, when you look at African history, I still get back to the point. Yeah, right. look at when you look at African history, Af- Af- Africans fought the, with the concept of the least casualties. Mm. Yeah? Agreed. I've seen that somewhere. Yes, yes. And so, I mean, black people used to fight. They didn't need to have breaks, and they, you know, they will have a place where they will fight. They right. know, That's I'm a battleground. Better, battleground. Yeah. And then maybe two so not be tange. Hey, let's stop. Um, we I mean, take a this, break. Uh, <laughs> let's go have a siesta. You know, I we'll like be back. That idea you get. <laughs> so, but when the when the color uh, the, the enslaver and the colonizer came, they came with guns and bullets and bullets. They were, were ready. Like, ready. No, Africans no. were like, let's, "What do you want? This land? Take it. We don't need this. <laughs> you know, I don't want problem. You know. So <laughs> the, the enslaved right. Africans there, what they recognized was this is a material problem. The moment they went from that instinctual yearning for freedom to a rational desire for freedom, they burned down the only thing that linked them to these people. They burned down all the plantation because that is the source of their misery and is the source of the profit for the master. Right. They severed the tie. That is the most profound education a human being can receive when they understand what it is that will be freedom and they take steps to achieve it. Yeah. But look at our society. Yeah. When, um, you know, one of the most ridiculous things that uh, goes on in our society, in this neo-colonial society, is this idea of civic education. Right. You have the right to health. You have the right to education. You have the right to life. You have right to education. You can't afford the, sc- the education. You have the right to health. You go to kind of thing hospital, there's no drugs. What is the use of having rights if you can't actualize them? But... People believe this stuff. They believe in the constitution. When you, you see these things I'm saying, somebody will listen. Kimom, the Fubuga is a problem. <laughs> because the thing is, the ideas of the ruling class have to be protected at all costs. And they're not magical. They're not metaphysical. They don't drop from the sky. They're needed for the maintenance of order in society so that the elite, the few, who enjoy and benefit from these things can stay at the top. And the moment people recognize the the the... The BS, hmm? no, the um, you know, the the nonsense, yeah. They break free. You see, yeah, Jami was here for 22 years. At some point, there was a qualitative leap. People are like, oh shit, this guy is just a human we being. Just, <laughs> I mean, and I think it happened at a certain point. And then when people recognized it, they were not. There was no going back. Yeah. So that's the thing for me. I think when we want to begin this idea of having critical thinking in this society, we must dismantle the entire educational system of this country, whether it's the madrasas, whether it's the English uh, system, uh, you know, and, you know, like, learn our languages, man. Like, listen, I, I you know... Begin their language, you know. And we'll get education back. is still the key to success. However, the problem we have is the interpretation of education. Like, everything you said, to a certain degree, I, I agree, but like you said, you started with the definition of education. If it's to train and cultivate, why must it always be in that cube that you have built for us to go and be indoctrinated? Why must education be limited to that? But my, my concern is that it's a general belief that that's where education is confined right. to. And that is very worrying for me because there is, so, from the moment you wake up, you are learning. It's just that you have to open your mind to this, uh, to the, to the, to the reality that you you can do it, and that's what you need to do. You learning doesn't stop. 
So why does it mean that education is education is the key to success? But you don't education doesn't only happen in the classrooms. No. You go outside. This conversation is big education for me. Mm. And when I say education, that's the perspective I'm saying. Education is getting into the car and realizing, oh, okay, not every driver has the same temperament. So when I step outside, you know, I can I can be rough with this other driver, but this one might be rough back at me. So that's you have learned from that situation. Every little detail that you're picking up that you haven't realized a second ago is education. And it never stops. So this idea that we have cultivated over time that it must only happen within a confined cube or that it should only come from that textbook, that in itself is the problem.